Well, good morning. I'd like to welcome our service. We're broadcasting live here on the fellowship wall. <laughs> but uh, according to Mr. Apple Watch, it's 27 degrees and sunny and a high of 39 today. So. Heat wave. Well, you know, you got to look at a, a couple ways of looking at this. And one is, thank God, there's two separate buildings. Yes. <laughs> yes. We have an extra backup furnace, so we're here. So, well, we're not roving up today. We're going to be a little more uh, informal, but that's okay. The church is not the building. The church is the people and the spirit of the people. That's what's so very important. So we're glad you're here today. Are there any announcements? Well, we have the Good Friday service, which will be here at 7 o'clock. Sun, Easter sunrise at 6.30, continental breakfast at 7.30, and regular worship at 10.30. Anything else to say about that? The continental breakfast on Easter Sunday is going to be a sign-up. Uh, we're going to have on the back wall of the church where the flowers are, we're going to have a sheet that you sign up on so we can get a count. If you don't sign up, we cannot guarantee that you will get fed. <laughs> so if you want to come, sign up. First time I've ever heard of a continental breakfast, this is a really big strip. <laughs> this one thing where it sounds bigger than it is. Exactly. Yeah. All right, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, as we begin this time of worship, we just come to you at this time, and sometimes the conditions aren't the most perfect conditions, but then the world's not perfect either. But we gather in the spirit of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we gather here to worship and praise the Lord. The Lord. So now move among us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Seven, trust and obey. <clears throat> As 
we go to prayer this morning, we have our prayer list in front of us, and um, also we want to pray for the furnace too that we can heat back next, next week before the weather gets warmer. Anybody have a joy or concern you'd like to share with us at this time? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, my son called me two o'clock the other morning, which was a shock, but I was already awake for some weird reason, but um, his wife was taken to the hospital, he was having kidney pain. Oh, oh. He made it home later that early that morning and he's got to find out who calls him so he can avoid those things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, my son David's going through those. He's having a couple times and it's not a good experience at all. He thinks it's worse than childbirth. I don't know how he does well, it. <laughs> <laughs> A woman I will listen to on that one, not a man. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Yeah. Uh, for the uh, family of the Catholics, he did uh, my neighbor. Right. And okay. he did pass away. Uh, two young and uh, 20, 20 ish boys. Yeah. And his wife. That's tough. Thing. Okay. Um, I have a phrase. It can, you know, Kenny's been always short all his life, but he has sprouted and he's been picked for an a AU basketball team. Travel oh, Eastern nice. Coast, so we're very proud of that. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Eric. Anybody going out the back door to caution, sort it down, and place out there? Okay. Yeah, all right, good. Next one is another. Yeah. Um, this is my phrase for my grandmother. She's had some more questions. For your grandmother? All right. Here. Uh, Joanne Huber was in the hospital for a couple days. Yeah, I saw her down at Elmer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a prayer for a very old, old, old close friend, Jim Shu. Yeah. He's been very sick and he fell yesterday. Uh, incoherent. And just some prayers for a very good, good yeah. old friend. Okay, keep so Jim in our prayers then. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Hey, it's not here. It's not here. No. Okay. Yeah, Ken in our prayers. Ken's supposed to have surgery on uh, this week for Ken. Tuesday. 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 Okay. Yeah. He's been over a matter of care. Yeah. Okay. Mary. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. I can't really have it. Oh, yeah. This oh, it is warm in here. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll take care of that request. <laughs> Anyone else? Keep, keep our sons in prayer. They're going on a road trip this oh, week. Nice. Dave's meeting them in Cincinnati and then coming back with them. Oh, so nice. um, just prayers for safety for them. Mike says you can blame him for the gas. The last time they took a long trip, gas was at an all-time high. Yeah. <laughs> so, at least we can get gasoline. That's so. right. That's yeah. the main thing, yeah. Same with food. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as we come to you now in prayer, they didn't start out quite the way we wanted it to, but here we are. So I know you're with us no matter where we worship. It's not the, the building, but it's the spirit that we worship with you. I pray that you would meet the needs that we've shared this morning, also the needs that are on our prayer list. And keep praying for these, Lord, because sometimes uh, your timing and our timing don't quite line up with each other, but um, we know that your timing is perfect. So may we continue to pray and and not just for the, the needs we have, but for the, for the good things, but also just for daily communication with you to seek guidance and direction, and you can surely give that to us. And now, Lord, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, a very familiar prayer, may it speak to our hearts to know we can come to the Lord at any time for any situation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we need to take our offering, but our usher come forward. <laughs> we got one plate only. So where's the plate? Oh, it's over there. We just got one of them, I guess. Kind of, uh, yeah. You got it. Okay. Thank goodness for that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
wait, wait. <laughs> I forgot last week. Sometime back, I mailed my gas bill to the I, to the not this church, but I mailed my gas. Bill, I gave my gas bill on the offering plate. <laughs> Sent the church tie to the gas company. Got a phone call. <laughs> they, knew, they said, "I think you got your checks mixed up." So. I think the church is complaining because the gas bill, actually the gas bill was higher than what the offering check was. <laughs> so anyway, but I remember this week to do that, so some things do happen, you know. I filled my truck up yesterday, it was $221. Whoa. Whoa. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> Big tank. Well, thank okay. you, God, you had it. Yeah, that's for sure. I didn't have it, I had a credit card. <laughs> All right. Thank you, God, for the credit card. You want to do the doxology? <laughs> 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 Paul. 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 Doxology. <laughs> From whom all blessings flow, praise him, all creatures here below, praise him above. have a sense of humor because the next hymn is I need thee every hour <laughs> you know it's uh, I can remember years ago in a church um, they always want everything to go like clockwork if something got out of whack or something or you missed something it was like oh you know how does that look to people um, I really appreciate the fact that uh, as I get older I make mistakes I skip hymns and do things like that and I'm not alone in my ability to do that but the main thing is that uh, we gather with the right spirit, and that spirit is, of course, to uh, worship the Lord. So this hymn is number 397, I Need Thee Every Hour. Oh, Terry's here, okay. Yeah. yeah. When I go to Sunday school, maybe, uh, okay.
<laughs> Never practiced it. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth, and a pet my and I had my birth. I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Keep that in mind, the, the miracles. Then Jesus went up to the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Let's pray. Lord, I pray now that you would just speak through me. They got kind of a crazy start, but uh, I pray now your spirit will use me as your instrument. And no glory to me, but to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I'm here this morning. So, Lord, speak through me, your servant. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We know the scene 5,000 people had gathered. And he said to Philip, Jesus asked the question, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Now, why did he ask that question? You'll find out in a moment. Because verse 6 says, he asked us only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Have you ever been tested by the Lord? When I walked in that cold sanctuary, that was a test. <laughs> I went, oh, no, this is not good. <laughs> but here we are. Sometimes we it strengthens adversity can strengthen us now the name philip as you probably find as you study the scriptures appears number of uh, numerous times in the new testament in matthew and john it appears referring to philip the apostle the philip in the book of acts is one of the first deacons this message though concerns itself with philip the apostle that'll be on your exam you'll take next week thanks <laughs> always say it to my students he listed um, he's listed with the other apostles in matthew 10 3 and john 1 43 Philip was called to follow the Lord, because we read this. The next day, Jesus decided to go into Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, 
follow me. He gave him the call. John chapter 1, 45 and 46 say this. Philip is portrayed as a soul winner. And we read in, in verse 45, Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked, Come and see, said Philip. And again, Philip is going to be instrumental in leading Nathanael to the Lord. Nathanael came and saw the Lord and confessed him as the Son of God. Philip was instrumental in helping Nathanael come to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. A lot of times um, people would say to me, you know, um, churches have different programs and, you know, things that will evangelize and win people to the Lord. And someone asked me, how many people in your ministry have you won to the Lord Jesus Christ? I said, that's easy. None. Someone said, what? You've never led a person to the Lord? Well, I planted some seeds, and they didn't respond then, but later on they did. I watered and nurturing some people in the congregation, and some I harvested. And I was the one, but it wasn't me that did the saving. It was the Spirit working through me. I think the downfall of, of clergy and a lot of times people in religious work start taking credit for themselves and that they're doing it. Um, I feel more inadequate and more humble as I get older. I struggle with, as, as we get older, we all have to face the fact that we get old. And I say, am I still effective? Should I still be doing this? And I remember I talking to my good old friend, Reverend Warren Light, who has been going out eight years. But he said, Bob, let the Spirit, let the Lord determine when you'll ever retire. But he said, I don't think we ever really retire. No Christian retires from sharing the message of Jesus Christ. So very, very important. Now, so... We read and the, of the testing of Philip, and that's what this talks about. Philip is going to be tested in chapter 6 of John. Christ was always concerned about others. The multitude was there, and we know that Jesus was always showing compassion. At the same time, he was concerned about Philip, because he cared about all his disciples. They had a great ministry ahead of them. When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw the great company of people coming to him, he said to Philip this, this question, How are we to buy bread for these so many people to eat, says verse 5. Then verse 6 tells us why he said it to Philip. It was to test him. It's easy to follow the story, under, I believe, and kind of broke it down into three, three headings. And number one heading would be the test. Let's look at the test. The Lord will test people in order to help him. Philip needed faith, his faith strengthened. Anybody here need your faith strengthened? We all do. We never arrive spiritually. We're always, we can always be a little bit better. Jesus knew that Philip was prone to look too much, now I know this doesn't apply to any of us, too much of the temporal things and not enough on the spiritual things. No, that's none of us, right? I, mean, I think we all struggle with that. He desired to test him. Have you put too much emphasis on the temple to the exclusion of the spiritual? <coughs> Guilty as charged. Too much reliance on self, not enough reliance on God. And I struggle with that even at my age. I really do. The Lord is testing us. Sometimes it's by delays. Sometimes he lets the furnace go out to test the congregation. See how resourceful they can put together a worship service in another building. I hope we got oil. We got, I, 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 I do too. <laughs> We've prayed earnestly and long, and sometimes the prayer is not answered according to your or my time schedule. Where's God? Remember that God's timetable and your timetable are not the same. First sermon ever preached in Newport, Rhode Island as a Navy chaplain was God's timetable. I can still remember exactly that particular sermon that day. Sometimes we're tested by disappointments. Our minds have been made up to do a certain thing and it doesn't work out. We are greatly disappointed, but disappointment can be a test also to show where our faith is. Set fast can teach us patience. Lord knows I need more testing in that and strengthen us for what we may have to face in the future. Sometimes we go through something and we're better prepared for that. I live by Romans 8, 28, that all things can work for good, those who love God according to his purpose. It doesn't say all things are good. It says all things can work for good. And I've had situations I've had to go through, and of course I've, I um, have a funeral this afternoon at 1 o'clock, a family I know very well. I've helped them before. And um, 
I remember um, when I met with the family the other day, they said, we really appreciate you coming out. Last time you helped us out, uh, you seem to be able to identify with the situation. And I said, well, I've been through some of the same things. And even the loss of my brother, I know how I feel inside. But if I can help someone with that loss, then that's a good thing. So setbacks are something, you know, not that I'm going to run out and praise God for everyone, but it does realize who we depend on and not ourselves. You always say people will let you down. Sometimes you'll let yourself down. Ever you let yourself down? Mm -hmm. I've done that. Yeah, I did. I, I said I really failed on this one. I, I really did a bad job on this, and let God do it. Sometimes when, as my brother said, when before he knew he, he knew he, his time was coming, but he said in a way it, he was glad he was prepared for it. I thought it was kind of interesting looking at it. You could say you know I got a bum deal. Why does this happen to me? But he said if you just dropped over dead. You know, like you didn't expect it, but when you know, you kind of prepare yourself for what's going to happen. And one thing, as we sat to my brother's funeral, I didn't speak at it, but I know a lot of good things were said about him by the priest in his church. But uh, the one thing I knew right there and then that my brother knew Christ as Savior. I mean, except for the Billy Graham crusade in Cincinnati many, many years ago. Sometimes emergencies come up; they test us. Sometimes unusual situation test our faith. And always we say, why is this happening to me? Why does God test us? I can suggest three reasons, okay? He tests us that we might know ourselves better. Do you really know yourself? Do you really know how you react in a situation? You just never know how you're gonna, you're gonna react. I, uh, I tend to get upset about a lot of things, I really do. I was working on a job for a guy, uh, restoring this Yankee Stadium chair, I had it all figured out and told the guy to have it done in about a week and a half. And I was working with slipped and it fell off the workbench. And these things are made out of cast iron. And I looked on the floor and the top piece broke off it. I went, oh no, I just broke this guy's iron. How can I fix it? So I looked at it and I, and, and, and I, I said, wait a minute, don't get upset. Calm down on this. I just stood there for a minute and looked at it. And then I realized, well, you know what? I could take one of my parts and give him mine. And then I realized I could repair it. And I thought about it for a while, and I was able to repair this thing that you can't tell. And the way I, the way I did it, it'll never break again. But for a moment, I could have reacted while I just going bonkers. Or, wait a minute, calm down. Sometimes God wants us to stop and look at how we react to things. Sometimes we don't react very good. Now, Peter thought he was top-notch disciple. Let's face it, in the pecking order, you know, he probably thought, I'm the man, right? <laughs> but before he could be used by God, Peter had to learn his own weaknesses and the ability to depend on God and not himself. And he did that by being humiliated when he denied Christ. He could have just, he blew it. But then he got to know himself. And I believe that Peter was tested through that whole process of denying Christ three times. He felt like a fool. But he learned that Peter on his own can't do anything. But Peter with the Lord can do all things. Because God can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You plus the Lord is always a winning combination. God is testing to see if you can muster up, if you can do the job. Do you really mean business for the Lord? God can work it out. So, but sometimes we just, we just get really upset. We show our own weaknesses. So, I'm glad in my little silly situation repairing something, I didn't totally lose it, but for a minute I was pretty upset. I did say this is not good. I really did. Do you mean business for the Lord? You also he's testing us. Can you pass the test? Are we ready for greater things that God can use us? He failed. If, if you fail the Lord, then what's going to happen next? But greater things can happen if you put your trust in the Lord. I believe the Lord wants to test us to rid ourselves of what I call too much self-sufficiency. We, we tend to reward our kids when they do something on their own. And that's a good thing. Self-reliance and self but Don't get to the point where you think you can operate without God. A lot of times we think we can. Um, God needs to be everything in our lives. 
We have limited resources. God has unlimited resources. There's nothing too great that God can't do for us and help us overcome. And that's so very important. Secondly, the answer. Philip answered him in John 6, 7. Philip answered him and said, this was his response, how are we going to feed these people? 5,000. He said, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Now, two things jump out of there. One is he's saying it's impossible. And even if we do this, we're only going to get one little bite. And that's it. The saints by Philip showed a lack of faith in spite of the fact that they had been around Jesus and seen him do many miracles. If we turn the Gospel of John, we note his mir the miracles that happened before this. He turned the water into wine, the marriage feast of Cana. He dealt a woman a Samaritan well, and many found the Lord through her. He, he healed the son of a certain nobleman at Capernaum. And all the things, the blind, the lick, the, 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 slick, the lame, all, all those he helped and that they forgot. Have you ever been guilty of when something happens, you forget about all the things God has done for you? You forgot all the blessings you had? John 5, 5 through 8. One who was there had been an in, 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 in invalid for an invalid, an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and leaned over, that learned that he had been there in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Verse 7 says, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when I have the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. The man was healed, took up his bed and walked. These and many other miracles were certainly done, and Philip was well aware of them. And yet, he, after all that Jesus has done, all the miracles, what does he say to the Lord? Well, Lord, it's in your hands. You can, you can feed them. He said it would take a half a year's wage to buy enough bread for one to have one bite. Christians should never use the word not sufficient, for God is all sufficient. And I believe that. Philip's answer was hasty. If he had taken more thought, he would have given a better answer. His answer was, again, self-sufficiency. He was looking at the resources. He looked at the situation. 5,000 people. We've got a kid's lunch. It's not going to work. There's no way we can stretch it to go like that. I remember my mom, would, uh, we uh, went one time, and uh, I came home and she said, uh, we have kind of unexpected company. Uh, get fried chicken. It's just one chicken leg. <laughs> a piece for you guys, because you usually eat like four. <laughs> she said, so you got to cut back. Green beans and corn take very little, because we, we got enough for the company. And I said, oh, no. She said, if you guys do this, Bob, she said, I'll buy you a pizza. Oh, the wow. magic words. <laughs> <laughs> the company was, was an aunt and an uncle, and um, they said, oh, you boys don't seem to have much of an appetite. <clears throat> oh, well, we, ate, we had a big lunch. <laughs> that's kind of fitting, but I think that's the kind of so loud. <laughs> but, uh, and we did get pizza that night. Oh, it was delicious. <laughs> my mom in the way of my heart. <laughs> But see, Philip forgot what God had done and Christ had done in the days before. He had turned his eyes from the Lord and began to look at human resources. It's funny how all the things God can do and then one situation comes up and we go, oh, where's God in all this? He's never left you. God never leaves our side. It's we that pull away. So, do you look to the Lord or do you look to yourself when something happens? Do you look to Christ or do you look to others for answers? When problems come on the telephone or talk, talk to other people, say, oh, I got this problem, I got that problem. In the hour of testing, it's a habit to look all around and not look towards the Lord. Even before spending time in prayer, we search for the advice of other people. We just do that. But remember, the God I serve can do the impossible. Are you faced with a great need? Right now, we are facing a, a great need. 200 bucks to fill up a pickup? 221. 221. <laughs> That's a lot. That puts a little debt in your wallet. You know? No, it's credit card. They didn't cost yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. I'm, I'm now using credit card at the gas station because I have enough money on me to do that, you know? Well, you can count on God. Sometimes he's testing us. You know, I, don't, I can't say that the gas prices are testing us, but I think they are in many ways. But we have to put our dependency on God. So, again, the impossible... Try to feed 5,000 with a few loaves and a few fish is not going to happen. It is impossible. But let's look at the result, the third thing. Philip made what I call a faithless answer. In verse 9, we then find Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, making a less faithless answer. Here's another disciple. 
As he was faced with the task of feeding them so many, he said, and this is, this, is, this is Andrew, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Note that Philip was disturbed by the 200 penny worth of bread that we're going to give a small portion to each. Andrew was quite certain that five barley loaves and two fish would not go anywhere in feeding the 5,000. Both men failed to test the faith. Ever thinking like, hey guys, you got Jesus here. <laughs> now you can say, if I'd have been there, I'd have said, well, I wouldn't have been, I'd have faith. I said, Jesus, you're the, you're the savior of the world. You could feed 10,000. I know the story. What would I have done in that situation? That's the question. That's what we have to be. We have to be strong spiritually. You may think I can do something. When time comes, I may really mess up. And here's the problem with unbelief. Unbelief is contagious. Andrew followed after Philip. I think he was influenced by Andrew. He said, well, Philip got negative. I'm going to be negative too. They were blind to the power of God. How far will they go among so many? Is the ant is the, as I call it answer of utter utter unbelief. Don't worry about how many when God is present. Andrew calculated without Christ. He saw a hopeless situation. He could not see Christ because of the difficulty before him. I have found in forty some years. I think well, let's see. Well, I got forty some years in ministry now, and I have found in in sadly to say in churches when crisis comes, people react only one of two ways. Either they get stronger, they come and talk to people, they rely on their friends in church, they pray a lot, they get strong in the faith. Others walk out the door and you never see them again, and they give up on it. And that's, a, I, I can say, like a battle casualty. I've seen too many of those in my life, too, for people who were so on fire for the Lord, but something bad happened, and they just walked away from their friends and everything else. And that does happen. Why does it happen? Well... I don't know what, I'm, I'm not in their shoes, so I can't criticize them, because I don't know what it would be like. But you know, it's when I was diagnosed with that tumor 20-some years ago, the side of my head here, and all of a sudden, I remember after the doctor told me, and I said, what's going to happen? And I said, I want a straight answer. He said, well, we have to do a biopsy. I said, well, what if it's a malignant tumor? He said, it's grown up into your brain. Not in, it could probably going to be, not be around by the end of the year. I said, well, uh, we got a second option on that doctor, and uh, he said, "We'll just have to see. I can't promise you anything." And then a real good side when I got was when he told me it was encapsulized. It's all together; it's not spread. And they cut me, and you know that you've heard the story before. But you know, I rode around for about an hour before I came home. I cried, and I said, "Lord, I give my life to serve the church. Why are you doing this to me?" That was the lowest spiritual part of my existence since I've been alive. And then I thought to myself, you hypocrite, you hypocrite, you know. And then I stopped at a light and just sat there kind of in tears. And then the light went to change, but it didn't change. You ever have that light doesn't change? It, 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 went, it went, wait a minute, we didn't get to go. And so I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, what is going on? And then this guy honked his horn and I thought, but the light's still red. I'm stuck here. And then I thought, maybe just maybe God's trying to tell me something mm -hmm. and this I wrote around the, I wrote around there was a sign out for some church and had a cross on it I thought I think somebody's trying to tell me something mm -hmm. and so a coincidence I don't think so because I actually drove a place I didn't I just was riding the ride and I thought where's your faith you stand up in front of that congregation and you tell them to love the Lord and you say you're the leader of the church, but you have failed the test. And from that, I went on and told my parliament about what was going to happen. And, and here I am today. Nothing's ever come back. But uh, I thought I had such faith. But then I understood I became less critical of Peter when he denied Christ. Because I failed the test. I should have said to the doctor, well, do the surgery. And I'm a Christian man and it's in God's hands. But I didn't. I kind of wanted a sign. When I went in that day to have surgery up at uh, uh, Eastern Hospital, I guess well, the hospital's gone now, it's been since moved, but I was uh, still nervous about the whole thing. I'm going to be honest with you. And when they told me there how much they had a cut and all this kind of stuff, man, I'd be numb at the bottom. I saw a problem with speaking sometimes. 
But I said, oh, Lord, I, I'm sorry for my unbelief. I, I keep asking for signs. And just then someone said, Pastor Ralph, what are you doing here? And I went, well, and it was Jesse Ivins of Christner, the church. And I said, Jesse, what are you doing here? Same thing you are, operation. <laughs> so he said, glad to see you, Pastor Ralph. I just wish I didn't have a chance even to pray with me. And we were close enough, I reached over with my left hand and grabbed his right hand. And I said, let us pray. And then a couple of people walked in and they just kind of stood there and I got that. I said, Amen. And they went and said, Amen. And I said, wow. he said, that's my minister. And I said, this is my parishioner. And the lady says, I, I, well, God must have known you guys need a little encouragement. She said, I'm a, I'm a strong believer in the Lord too. And, and I thought all these things kind of worked out. And I thought, where was my faith in all of this? And I thought to myself, that, that Philip and that Andrew, how dare them have no faith? I was no different that day in that hospital. My first was running the doctors off my first term. Because if God can heal all those people and feed 5,000, he can take care of Bob Ralph in the surgery. And he did. Folks, we must keep our eyes on Christ and let the Lord lead. Put your full trust in him. And don't forget what God has done for us and all of us. When trials come, don't be doubtful. Continually look to the Lord and depend upon the Lord. That's so very, very true. We, we have to do that. So what is Jesus? He's about to take over now. After the words of Philip and Andrew, good testimony of no faith, he said, Jesus said this. Jesus now took over. Have the people sit down. He was about to perform a great miracle. He said, okay, guys, no more negativity. I've done a bunch of miracles. I'm going to do another one. So Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, distributed them to disciples, and when they when they were and when they were all done, they had leftovers. You believe it? The bread and the fish were given out, all, all were filled. Then he said, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with pieces of five burly burly barley you know, <laughs> barley loaves and left over but left over that we had eaten. They got leftover food. They had them with more than leftovers. The Lord was able to satisfy their hunger, and Jesus Christ can satisfy your spiritual hunger. No halfway measures for him. The fullness of the blessings. And notice when he said, if we do this, we get everybody gets a bite. He didn't give them a bite. They had they they, they went back for seconds. When you think about it. They're trying to get in. Okay. Next. Philip is concerned that everybody take just a little bit. God gives out generous helpings of blessings. John 6.35 says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Whatever has happened in the world, 221 for gas, whatever, don't let it get to you. 221. <laughs> yeah, 221, 100. I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. <laughs> the first time I ever, I ever goofed anything up, I can't believe it. <laughs> because you know what? God will satisfy all your needs, not all your wants. But you know what? You won't go hungry, you won't go thirsty. Never forget that God's able to take a little bit and turn it into much. He's not concerned that the loaves were five, few in number, and the fish were small. God has a way of taking the little bit and making it very big. And he'll do it for you. He was a little baby to move the heart of Pharaoh's daughter, called Mo by baby Moses. He was a shepherd's rod of Moses to work a mighty miracle and deliver the people from Egypt. He used David's slingshot to overthrow that mean, nasty giant called Goliath. He used the widow with a handful of meal to sustain his prophets, her prophets. He used a little child to teach his disciples much needed lessons in humility. And he used the five loaves and two fishes to feed a great multitude. And that same Lord Jesus can meet your need, whatever it may be. So, it may be that God wants to use you in a special way. He, but you give excuses and say, I have limitations. We all do. You do not, he doesn't always look at your doubts, your talents and everything. God likes to take the usual person and do the unusual. Main thing is, you got to be humble. you got to put your dependence on God. I told you, for the last 40 years, I've never walked into a church service and stood behind the pulpit and never felt total confidence. 
I've always been a little nervous about it. It never bothered me when I taught college all those 20 some years. When I walked into a classroom, I just felt real comfortable. When I stand behind a pulp at a sacred desk, it's not easy. And I pray God will really use me. I can look over the notes, I look them over again today, you know, and we even try to distribute them amount from here and lose them. <laughs> oh, we found them. Again, uh, you know, as we go when I first couldn't find the pages, I said, this is not good. <laughs> but God, I mean, that's why I always say a prayer after I read the scripture, because I really believe that we need to rely totally on God. And as I get older and you start to forget things and things get a little tougher to do, my total dependence is on Jesus Christ. And I do my best, but I'm only a mere servant of the Lord. I take no credit for anything I do. If anybody likes it, that's a good sermon or whatever, you want to thank the Lord, don't thank me. Oh, I do preparation, look stuff on the computer. But without the Holy Spirit, you know what? It doesn't work. And too many of these hotshot preachers who with their prosperity gospel, I'm not going to criticize. They have to live with it. Because my job is not to make myself look good. It's to help us. And right now, there's ever been a need in this country. We need to hear preaching that talks about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And this Bible is God's holy word. And we need to hear that. So if you would, every week, Saturday night, say a prayer for me that God will really use me. Because I really need his help. Uh, I'm, I'm into now 20 font. My eyesight isn't as good. I can't hear as good as I can. <laughs> but I still want to do my part. As long as I'm breathing, I want the Lord to use me. I don't want to say, how can this happen? I want to say, with God's help, it will happen. It's time for all of us to turn away from self-sufficiency and rely on total dependency on God. Place yourself in the Lord's hands and let him use you to do great things. Where God likes to take the usual, normal person and use them in unusual and great ways. We may be a small church, but don't underestimate what God can do to us. Because it's more than what we do on a Sunday morning. It's throughout the week as we meet people. Let God use you. Because right now, this, people, this country needs salvation. They need Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that again we can gather here today, and uh, we're just glad we had heat in this room this morning. And the message was proclaimed, because I know you placed this message on my heart, and I know it was important for us to gather and hear this. Let us put our full hope and trust in you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our last hymn is uh, number 368, My Hope is Built, and that is on Jesus Christ. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy hill, my anchor holds within my veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His hope is covered in his love, support me in the conclude this service we thank you we can gather here today and i believe the message is so true lord that we get so carried away with what's happening around us we we have problems but we let the problems get to us 
the Lord as we face another week. May our lives show a dependency on the Lord and show a faith that is appealing to others that will show others that we put our trust in the Lord. So now use us, Lord, to share our faith with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a great day in the Lord. The whole song, right? Like the well I was seeking Oh,